Hello everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So last week we talked a little bit about backgrounds in 3D Studio Max and how you can use a rough background like the one I'm, I'm showing here to create a context for your object rather than a, a setting. And we're going to extend that today. I'm going to use the ink and paint shader in order to create a sort of sketch of this television rather than an actual literal rendering of it like this. Um, now I'm not going to be able to go into all of the details of the ink and paint shader in 3D Studio Max because there are just too many features there. There's too much that you can do with it for me to, to pack it into 10 minutes. So what we're going to do is look at a very specific technique that you can do with the ink and paint shader and then I will talk more about the details in a written tutorial on my website. So I've applied a single material to this television. Um, it's this one here. I've titled it Ink and Paint. I'm going to click on Standard, and I'm going to select Ink and Paint. Click OK. So the default Ink and Paint, I'm going to go ahead and take a render, see what we're looking at so far. OK, now for this image, what I want to do is remove the filling, and I'm going to try to get a sort of rough drawing type effect. I don't want it to be so clean and perfect. So I'm going to close this for a second. First things first, I'm going to remove the interior. I'm going to remove the lighted paint. And then that's just going to leave me with the ink controls. Ink quality can go up. I don't mind long renders. And uh, so in order to get that drawing effect, a kind of a sketch, we're going to apply variable width. So I want the width of the lines to, to change depending on, on different uh, different needs. Two to four, minimum to maximum. Um, let's make that five, so I want slightly thicker lines. Make it look like the, the pen was one of those old fountain pens that, that really sends out a lot of ink. And let's take a render, see what that looks like. Okay, we're on the right track. I'm starting to get a little bit of shading down here, which is good. Very good. I'm going to close this. So the next step would be to uh, change the bias here. So these, these biases, they control when the renderer will draw the lines. So you'll notice that back here it wasn't showing up. That's because the bias is too high for the size of this object. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the bias down. Down to... I don't know, three, we'll, we'll try three for now. So let's take a re-render, see what this looks like. Okay, awesome. Now we're really starting to see the effect here. We're starting to get some of that really gentle hatched shading. I love that, that's perfect. That's just what we want. Um, it's starting to look good. It's still a little bit too clean for me. So I know one other technique for dirtying this up um, we can use uh, right here. We can control the ink width by using a map. So I'm going to click on none and I'm going to apply um, what would be good here? Let's use noise. Just ordinary noise. And uh, I'll change it to fractal and a little bit bigger. Let's make it two. And I think that that's all I'm going to want to change here. Let's take another render, see what this looks like. Oof. That's about what I want. That's, a, that's pretty much what I'm looking for right here. Um, yeah, I really like the top here too. All right, so this is it. This is my render. What we've done is taken the ink and paint material We've applied some maps to it, really dirtied it up with noise. We dirtied it up with variable width in the ink. And what that has given us, and of course we removed the paint controls as well, and what that's given us is this sort of sketch effect. And when we combine that with the background that we have here, this sort of rough paper, we build a beautiful image that plays off of the different elements that are in it.
Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads at my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.